Hello guys, welcome back to my channel. Hope all of you are doing fine and a happy Navratri to all of you. If you think you really like the content of this channel and the content of this channel is helpful for you, please subscribe to my channel and please share my videos as much as possible. So today I am going to discuss 5 classes of anti-diabetic drugs. Basically here I am going to tell you how do we classify the anti-diabetic drugs depending upon the mechanism of action. So let's just start with the first class of anti-diabetic drugs. Whatever food we are taking in, majority of the food is in the form of the oligosaccharides. But the form of the carbohydrate which is absorbed from the small intestine, it is in the form of a simpler carbohydrate that is glucose. So in the small intestine, we are having an enzyme which is called as alpha glucosidase which helps in breaking down of the complex carbohydrates like oligosaccharides into monosaccharides. So once this alpha glucosidase acts on the oligosaccharides, oligosaccharides are broken down into glucose and then the glucose is absorbed from the small intestine and immediately after food this is the one which results in postprandial hyperglycemia. So in order to in case of diabetics patients we don't want this immediate postprandial hyperglycemia. So we have a drug which inhibits this alpha glucosidase which is called as alpha glucosidase inhibitors. What are these drugs called as? These are alpha glucosidase inhibitors. So what is the main function of the alpha glucosidase inhibitors? Alpha glucosidase inhibitors they prevent what is called as postprandial hyperglycemia, postprandial hyperglycemia. So example of this class of drug is acarbos. Example of this class of drug is acarbos. So this is the first class of drug. What is the name of the classification of this drug? This is called as alpha glucosidase inhibitors. Coming to the second class of drug, in order to understand the second class of drug, we have to first understand the mechanism of secretion of insulin which I have already described in one of my previous videos. So if you want to understand this class of drug in a better way, please go back and see my video on mechanism of secretion of insulin as well as the mechanism of action of insulin. Once the glucose is absorbed from the GIT, what is going to happen is the concentration of glucose in the blood is going to increase. What is that is called as? It is called as postcranial hyperglycemia. Now this glucose is going to gain entry into this cell. What is this cell? This is the beta cell which is present in the pancreas via a receptor which is called as the GLUT2 receptor. So once glucose gains entry into the beta cell, Glucose is broken down by means of glycolysis and ultimately the glucose is going to yield ATP. Increase in the concentration of ATP is going to block this important channel which is called as ATP sensitive potassium channel. Now what is the function of this ATP sensitive potassium channel is it is going to cause what is called as potassium efflux. So what is the meaning of potassium efflux? This ATP sensitive potassium channel is going to pump out potassium from inside the cell to outside the cell. Now because of increase in the concentration of ATP, this ATP sensitive potassium channel is blocked. So what does it result in? It results in accumulation of potassium and increase in the concentration of potassium inside the cell. Whenever inside the cell a positive ion accumulates or there is an increase in the concentration of a positive ion, the cell undergoes what is called as repolarization. Once the cell undergoes depolarization, this is going to open voltage gated calcium channels resulting in calcium influx. So whenever there is a calcium influx, there is exocytosis of the secretory granules which are present inside the cells and here in case of the beta cells, the secretory granules contain insulin and hence insulin is released. So this entire mechanism is what is called as glucose mediated insulin release okay why this is happening why the insulin is releasing insulin is releasing because of the entry of the glucose inside the cell now here we have a drug which can block this ATP sensitive potassium channel 
So now what is going to happen if our drug is going to block ATP sensitive potassium channel? The same thing is going to happen. The function of ATP sensitive potassium channel is to cause an efflux of potassium. Now efflux of potassium is not going to occur. Potassium concentration inside the cell is going to increase. This is going to result in depolarization. This is going to cause opening of voltage gated calcium channels. This results in calcium and that is going to cause an insulin release which is very good for the body whenever the person is suffering from type 2 diabetes mellitus. So the second class of drug are what are called as inhibitors of ATP sensitive potassium channels. Inhibitors of ATP sensitive potassium channels and hence what they are going to cause? They are going to cause increase in the glucose mediated insulin release that is the body is getting increased amount of insulin and hence it can reduce the blood glucose levels in the body okay these group of drugs which inhibit atp sensitive potassium channels these are called as sulfonyl ureas these are called as sulfonyl ureas predominantly used in type 2 diabetes mellitus predominantly used in type 2 diabetes mellitus so second group of drug inhibits atp sensitive potassium channels in the beta cell coming to the third group of drug whenever the food enters into the git and it can be in the form of uh, carbohydrates or amino acids the git is going to secrete a hormone which is called as glucagon like peptide 1 and this glucagon like peptide 1 is having three important actions okay what are these three important actions the first and foremost important action is that that it is going to cause an increase in the secretion of insulin from the beta cells that means the glucagon like peptide 1 is on the beta cells and it is causing an increase in the glucose mediated secretion of the insulin. Second very important action is that it inhibits secretion of glucagon inhibits the secretion of the glucagon. We all know what is glucagon does. Glucagon is having an exactly opposite action to that of insulin with regards to glucose metabolism. Insulin always reduces the blood glucose level and glucagon always increases the blood glucose level that's why glucagon is called as a counter regulatory hormone so when glucagon secretion is inhibited again it is aiding in controlling of hyperglycemia which occurs in type 2 diabetes mellitus again the third very important action of glucagon like peptide is that it is not only causing an increase in the secretion of insulin from the beta cell but glucagon like peptide 1 also causes increase in the synthesis of insulin in synthesis of insulin so it is stimulating the gene transcription factors which help in increase in the synthesis of insulin but on a downside this glucagon like peptide 1 which is released from the GIT in response to the presence of food in the GIT it is immediately degraded by an enzyme it is immediately degraded by an enzyme Okay, so that's why the shelf life or the half life of this glucagon like peptide 1 is very much limited. That is why we have developed the drugs which are called as glucagon like peptide 1 analogs and agonists. These glucagon like peptide analogs and agonists they are not degraded by the enzyme and they stay in the gut for a longer duration of the time and what will be their action? Their action is same as that of glucagon like peptide 1. What are, what are the actions? Increase in the insulin secretion from the beta cell, inhibition of the glucagon secretion and also increase in the synthesis of insulin from the beta cells. So all these three actions are going to help our glucagon like peptide 1 analogs and agonists to help in reducing the blood glucose levels. So I will give you two drugs which fall under the category of glucagon like peptide 1 analogs and agonists. These are called as liraglutide and exenatide. This is our third group of drug. Fourth group of drug, as just now I have told you, that glucagon like peptide 1 is enzymatically degraded immediately as soon as it is released, and hence the shell life of GLP 1 is very less. So, which is that enzyme which is degrading this? The enzyme is called as dipeptidyl peptidase 4. Now, we have developed the drugs which can inhibit this dipeptidyl peptidase 4. So, what is going to happen is glucagon like peptide 1 is produced from the gut whenever 
we take intake the food and this is what was happening till now is it was immediately degraded by this enzyme which is called as dipeptidyl peptidase 4 now we have drugs which inhibit this dipeptidyl peptidase 4 and hence prolonging the half life of glp1 in the gut and i have already told you i am repeating again that glp1 increases the insulin secretion glp1 inhibits the glucagon secretion glp1 also increases the synthesis of insulin from the beta cells so all these three things are helping in combating hyperglycemia which occurs in diabetes mellitus so ddp4 inhibitors are sitagliptin and linagliptin these are the two drugs or examples of DPP4 inhibitor. So we have seen four classes of drugs. Coming to the last and the fifth class of drug, in order to understand this fifth class of drug, we need to understand how our renal tubules handle glucose. So what is going to happen here is that glucose, glucose is absorbed completely from the glucose. Sorry, it's not absorbed. Glucose is filtered by our glomerulus okay and then the glucose is going to enter into the proximal convoluted tubule what is going to happen to the glucose in the proximal convoluted tubule we all have studied in our physiology classes that 100 percentage of the glucose is reabsorbed back in the proximal convoluted tubules itself and which is the channel which is causing reabsorption of the glucose? The channel which is causing reabsorption of glucose is called as SGLT2, which is present in the renal tubules. Now, what does this SGLT stands for? SGLT stands for sodium glucose transporter 2. So now we have developed the drugs which can inhibit this SGLT2 and hence inhibit the reabsorption of the glucose. So if the reabsorption of the glucose is inhibited, so what is it? What does that mean? The concentration or the amount of glucose which is coming back into the blood is reduced. Hence, this will also aid in controlling the hyperglycemia which can occur in diabetes mellitus. So we have developed the drugs which are called as SGLT2 inhibitors which act on the kidneys and these are nothing but canagliflozin and dapagliflozin. So now let me just summarize the five classes of anti-diabetic drugs which we have understood in a very easy manner which was the first group of drug first group of drug was yes very good which was the drug that was called as alpha glucosidase inhibitor what was the function of alpha glucosidase alpha glucosidase helped in breaking down of oligosaccharides into monosaccharides because breaking down of oligo into mono is very important for the absorption of glucose hence if i am inhibiting this alpha glucosidase what i am doing i am preventing what is called as postprandial hyperglycemia so these are very important in decreasing what is called as postprandial hyperglycemia okay it was the second group of drug second group of drug is dependent upon the mechanism of insulin secretion okay and the mechanism of insulin secretion occurs when glucose enters into the beta cells produces atp and this atp inhibits a very important channel in the beta cell which is called as atp sensitive potassium channel so we have developed the drugs which inhibit basically ATP sensitive potassium channels, ATP sensitive potassium channels and this is used in type 2 diabetes mellitus and hence it can increase secretion of insulin from the GIT. Okay, These group of drugs are what are called as sulfonylureas, sulfonylureas which was the third group of drug which we seen. We have we also know that as soon as the food enters into the GIT, the GIT is going to secrete a hormone which is called as glucagon like peptide 1. Glucagon like peptide 1. And we know that the shell life of this glucagon like peptide is very less because it is degraded by an enzyme which is called as DPP4. Hence, we have developed the drugs which are called as GLP-1 analogs and GLP-1 agonists.
Okay, so these are the drugs which resist the degradation by the enzyme and they act like glucagon like peptide. And we all know what are the three important actions of glucagon like peptide. Next, we have the drug. I told you just now that GLP1 is degraded by an enzyme. We have the drugs which can inhibit this enzyme, which is called as DPP4. And these are called as DPP4 inhibitors. This DPP is inhibited, what is going to happen? It is going to increase the shell life or the half life of glucagon like peptide 1. And glucagon like peptide 1 is going to stay in the GIT for a longer duration of the time and it is going to cause more amount of insulin secretion. It is going to inhibit the glucagon secretion and it is also going to aid in the synthesis of insulin. And at last, we have drugs which act on the kidney. What happens is glucose is filtered freely in the glomerulus and then almost 100% of the glucose is reabsorbed in the proximal convoluted tubule via a channel which is called as SGLT2. What's the full form of SGLT2? Sodium glucose transporter 2. So now we here we have drugs which are called as SGLT2 know how the glucose is traveling in the body, what is happening to it physiologically, it becomes very very easy for us to understand and classify these five different types of anti-diabetic drugs which are used profoundly in the management of type 2 diabetes mellitus. Hope you have understood the concept behind these five anti-diabetic drugs. If you have liked this video, understood this video, kindly subscribe to my channel because there's a lot of very interesting and important content which will be coming in the future. I don't want you to miss on that content. Kindly subscribe, kindly like and kindly share this video as much as possible. Thanks a lot for watching.